one thing. So Lorimer, what's the one thing that you want people who are challenged by pain to know about? One thing. That's a very limiting question, isn't it? Uh, I would like people challenged by pain to know that, that there is genuine hope uh, being revealed by scientific discovery uh, and uh, that it's, a, I don't know if this will be at all valuable actually to, to think that it's an exciting time for a pain scientist to be in the pain field because the field is actually moving again uh, and, it, and it feels like there's a lot of opportunity. So the, the one thing that, that uh, I would love people to know is that there is hope. And the reason I think there is hope is that uh, we, have, uh, we have seen the field shift a great deal in what's considered the best treatments. Uh, and we've seen glimpses of outstanding outcomes for people challenged for years, decades with persistent pain. And those outcomes seem to be associated with uh, exploiting the resources that this individual has. So the person in pain is actually challenged, who's actually challenged by pain, has those resources inside them. And the reason that I, I see great hope in this uh, is uh, that we are now on a journey of working out, well, how do we, how do we find those things and empower people and embolden people to uh, find them themselves, train them and take a journey that, that's actually moving towards recovery. Uh, and the reason I think that's really exciting is that for much of the time I've been in the pain science space, which is 30 years, uh, there's been either pain management, live with it, deal with it, it's not going to change sort of approach, uh, or treat an injury, and we now know actually often nearly all the time an injury is not the problem. So there is great hope that we have shifted our focus towards uh, a new journey. Can you expand a little bit on the resources that people have inside them? So it sounds like it's an active process, but what are those things that give you hope? Yeah, well, I guess we're, we're on the front edge of that journey to work out what exactly are those things. Uh, when we look at the things that characterise people that make this uh, that make this shift and, and take on a different journey and do well, we're trying to work out what's what's different about them and what's different about what they uh, did and how they engaged with different approaches and things like that. And I guess the themes that are emerging, uh, and we still don't we still don't know the best way to deal with this. Actually, we're really looking for uh, a lot of input from people challenged by pain to help us with these, these sorts of research inquiries. But the, the, the themes that seem to be emerging is, uh, include people uh, shifting, their, shifting their understanding of pain to be about protection of the tissues of their body, not detection of pathology. And that's actually not a brand new concept. It's, it's that concept's a couple of decades old, but, uh, we seem to be seeing more and more evidence that when people get it, when they really get it, then they start making different choices because their pain uh, is converted into a, a protective device, if you like. Now, the, the challenge that faces people like me uh, is how do, we, how do we have a better hit rate with this? How do we get a better impact uh, it's not just about delivering knowledge or content or something. I mean, the experts really in this field are the people challenged by pain. Uh, we have a set of skills of scientific inquiry that uh, we can utilise, but we really rely on that information from the, the true experts. Uh, and I feel like I've been learning so much about how to optimise the, the likelihood of getting a hit, getting a... Uh, a really compelling conviction uh, within the person challenged by pain that their system is changeable. Uh, we, we have a phrase called bioplastic. You know, all their systems we know are adaptable. Uh, we just got to work out how we can thread that line of working with a way over protective pain system, uh, but also working with a highly adaptable highly clever system uh, and 
you know, what, what the key is, I, I don't know what the key is, but I, I certainly feel like we are doing our side of that way better than we were two years ago. Uh, and actually some discoveries in my group and other groups really brought home the reality to me. We've been doing it not very well for quite a long time and even doing it not very well, doing our side of things not very well, we've even had exciting outcomes. Uh, so we're getting hit rates of about 50%, which is fantastic. Uh, but we're seeing that elevate now. To, uh, and, and you mentioned, Josh, you said it sounds like an active thing. And I've really flipped my whole understanding of, of what education should be about. And I, and I think we, the pain education community, has somehow slipped into, had somehow slipped into this misunderstanding that <clears throat> education was the goal. Uh, whereas that's not the case. Education is the strategy to achieve the goal of fundamental embedded learning. Uh, and we, I, I can only see that we will get better and better at working out what, it, what this individual needs to learn and working that out collaboratively uh, and, and how to operationalise that, how to um, have the embedded knowledge that you start making decisions differently and you take a different course of action. Uh, it's highly, obviously, it's very individual and highly complex, but... Um, yeah, we're definitely moving in a, a good direction on that. Uh, so, yeah, where to go, Josh? I, I would probably say uh, go somewhere with your eyes open critically, uh, but take on that journey yourself. Look for the things that, you know, you start, start on a level. So let's say you start off with a, uh, an, an animation on pain that seems to be reputable and... Look, look deep inside your guts as you're watching it to see, are you surprised by something? Do you disagree with it? Do you feel angry about any of it? Do you feel frustrated? Anything you feel, or you might feel elated, or you're, you're surprised, they're critical learning moments. So don't let them go through. Stop the video and think, why am I feeling like this right now? And that will, if you listen to that and allow that to be a motivator, that will lead you towards the next resource. Uh, presuming you, you're, you're comfortable online following uh, links and those sorts of things. But certainly do not take on the myth that education is something that happens to you. Uh, remember that, it, that learning requires you to do the learning. And the more I learn about it, the more it feels just like uh, training your body, have intense periods of effort, uh, Evaluate your performance. Uh, monitor when you're surprised or angry or excited and, and ask yourself the question, why? Why did I feel like that? Because that will really drive your learning and you will drive the direction of your learning. You know, somehow that turned into some sort of weird wisdom thing, which I didn't mean it to do at all. I don't have a sense of, of being that person. That's great. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And we'll let you get back to work. Thanks, Josh. Have a great day, man. All right, see ya. See ya. We are recording. Hi, Tessa. There's my dog visiting.